today we're just going to talk a little bit about um, radio transmissions, especially from remote controls that work through radio, and how to find out what frequency they, they run on, and how to test that and look up information about them. Here I have an array of devices. Um, so here I have a, a fan remote. So I have fans in my house, two of them that are controlled by remote controls. These are them here. These are just two little uh, remote controls. This one's got a cool antenna. This one came with a wireless four-way relay, so I can turn these relays on and off with that remote, but it's also programmable, so I can also get it to run off this remote because it's on the same frequency. And I got this for a dollar or two off of eBay, and it's, it's much cooler looking. You know, it's metallic, and it's got buttons in it. It lights up when I press it. It didn't come with anything, but I can program stuff to work with it, uh, including things like Arduinos and other uh, things. This one is uh, what I talked about in a previous video. I have Zap outlets. It came with two of these remotes. I have five outlets, and they're all reprogrammable, so I can actually I can use this remote that came with it. I had been using a Raspberry Pi, but now I'm using an ESP8266 to control it through my cell phone, which I'll talk about in the future video. Um, but I can also reprogram these if they're on the same frequency. So how do you know what frequencies these things run on? You know, sometimes, like these devices, when I bought them, they told me. Uh, also, I have uh, these little chips. These are uh, uh, transmitters and receivers that you would use in an Arduino or some sort of microcontroller project. Uh, and a lot of these types of devices will run either at, uh, the most common are 315 megahertz or 433 megahertz. And these here are uh, 433 megahertz, and these ones are 315. They look almost identical, because the only thing that's really different on them is a little, little uh, element right there. Um, so, the way I know which is which, let me get a little close up here if I can. You're still not going to be able to read it, but whatever. Um, in the back here, it's listed. It says 315, 330, and 433. And if we look at the same one on the 333 one here, I'm sorry, 315 here, there's actually, I know you can't see it, a little white dot indicating this is a 315. Uh, I don't have that on this one, but I know that it's it's 433 from when I bought it. But also, the, the longer board here is the receiver. The square one is the transmitter. And both transmitters have a little metal, uh, uh, I don't know if that's the crystal or whatever on there. But it's printed on there. This one says 315. This one says 433. So as long as I know they're together. And I also know that this one that isn't marked is a 433. Um, so those I know, and these I know because I ordered them, but anything that transmits uh, a radio frequency should have an uh, FCID, or FCID, FCC ID, issued by the FCC, at least here in the United States. I don't, I don't know about other countries how that works, but, you know, these things come from different countries, so I don't know. So... A lot of devices, like these controls, you're not going to be able to read them here in the camera, but they have printing on the back, and they have an FCC ID number. Uh, both of them do, and I can look that up online, which we'll go over in a minute. Uh, so does this. This is an old CB radio that I got uh, from my grandmother after my grandfather passed away. Uh, radio Shack made this model back in from 91 to 93, and it has an FCC ID on the back. So I can definitely uh, look that up if I need to. Yeah. So, which I did, which is how I figured out what radios, because this is A, B, and C channels. It doesn't tell me what frequencies, but I was able to look up what channels they work on and then use my, uh, uh, my computer to actually check those channels. This here, you might be asking what this is if you don't know. This is a pogo plug. Uh, I actually have like three of these. One that I use daily as my uh, main server for storing files and tunneling through my network. Uh, this is a $20 Linux computer that you can purchase uh, and you can run the operating system that comes on it, which is a Linux-based operating system, but you can also, I have Debian installed on mine, and it has multiple USB ports, a network plug, so you plug in your hard drives and you have yourself a little cloud server that you run out of your house, uh, which I use SSH and HTTP to communicate with. Um, but this black one here 
is the Pro model, which was a little more money. Um, I actually, this the first one I bought, uh, it cost me about 70 bucks, and then like two years later they dropped in price, and again, you can get them for 15 to 20 dollars, at least the, the, the non-Pro. And the big difference, the reason I got the Pro, besides the fact that the other one was an ugly pink color, um, is that it has Wi-Fi built in. So Wi-Fi is radio, so I'm, if you pick up these, or if you look at your router, there's an FCC ID on the bottom there. And again, I'm going to show you online how to check those out. Uh, let's see, I haven't even looked at this, but this probably should have an FCC ID on it. Uh, let's see... Somewhere on this, this has Wi-Fi in it, so it has to have an FC, uh, FCC ID. Uh, now some of these devices like these, I don't see an FCC ID on them. Um, I don't know if that's because they're coming from, from China, which is where I ordered them from, or if the number's on the inside. In fact, the uh, Zap remote doesn't have it on the outside. I don't know if it's behind the battery. Somewhere on it, though, I'm pretty sure legally it has to have an FCC ID written on it somewhere. It just might might be in the enclosure. But most of the time, you can look on the outside and see them. This one even, I just got this one in the mail today, it even says 4, 433 on the back megahertz. Uh, so I know what that runs on. Well, let's go ahead and grab one of these. I'll, I'll just grab this remote here, and we'll check out the FCC ID online and see what information we get. So here is a very, very basic website. It's FCC.io. You go there, and all you do is type in the FCC number here and hit search. So let me go ahead, and I'll grab my remote here. I'll look on the back, and I'll tell you what the FCC ID is. It's L3H2010FANHD. And if if I was inside the text box, that would have typed there. Let's do that again. L3 H20. And actually, I've typed this one in before. No, that's a different remote. I think that's probably the other remote. Uh, 0, 1, 0. And I'm pretty sure the search is not case sensitive. Fan HD. And if I typed everything right, it should bring me yet to the FCC website here. And here it gives you a quick overview. It tells me, um, you know, I can click to view the form, details, uh, display correspondence, application. So this is the company name here, their address, their city, state, which this is Taiwan, so there's no state, zip code. Uh, there's the FCC ID. Um, it says original equipment, so this is the application purpose. Uh, final action date, and then here's what we really care about over here. Um, that is where it states the low range of the frequency and the high range, which both in this case is 303.9 megahertz. So, unfortunately, most uh, most home things like this are going to be in that range because because uh, of the way uh, you know. Uh, laws work when it comes to radio stuff. Unfortunately, most things we're going to control with an Arduino or an ESP8266, uh, as far as I can find, are either going to be uh, 433 or the 315. So this is at a range. This is uh, 303.9. So what does this mean? Well, with my very limited knowledge on this subject, I don't know how to control a uh, one of these fans with an Arduino or an ESP chip at that, at least not at low cost. There are, there are, I've seen expensive things transmit, but those little uh, transmitters and receivers I was showing you earlier for the Arduino that you can also hook up to a Raspberry Pi or an ESP, those are $3 for both the transmitter and the receiver mailed to your house from China. Very, very low cost. To access these fans without pulling apart that remote and, and hooking up to it directly, I don't know how to do that, unfortunately. But there's a lot of things you'll find around your house, uh, small devices, that will work in the range of 315 to 433. Not 2433, but yeah, those two, those two ranges. And again, I'm going to show you, I, I went over previously how I had one of those chips hooked up to a Raspberry Pi to control the lights in my house. I've moved over the system to an ESP chip. So I have an ESP chip with one of those transmitters. I'll show you how I recorded the button presses and how I actually use a web interface uh, to, to control that. In fact, let me show you the web interface. So here on my Arduino phone, I have an icon on my desktop. And when I click that, and now this is a interface I made based just on a basic uh, uh, HTML, CSS template. Uh, I think it was using Bootstrap, because I like Bootstrap. And I have 
three switches here, so I'm in my office. I press that, you probably didn't notice it, but the lights came on over there. And so I have this web interface running and it communicates with the ESP just through HTTP submit. So it's using some Ajax in the background to submit. So when I press that, it's talking to the $3 chip in the other room that is running as a web server and it sends a signal out uh, that transmitter that's like a $1.50 transmitter and I can now control lights in my house. Uh, so very, very simple to do. And again, we're going to go over that in more detail uh, probably in the next video. Focus on me. Thank you. Um, so, so again, we're going to go over that in more detail. I'm also going to show you how to troubleshoot once you know the range or if you don't know the range, kind of how to find it using um, a USB dongle that costs you 10 to 20 bucks. And then um, there are certain things you know you can check. Is it not sending out a signal at all, or is it? And I'm not receiving it. For example, um, uh, my car keys, the little uh, fob on here, actually transmits on the same frequency if I type in the FCC ID and I check it with my USB dongle as those cheap little controllers I got from Japan. But they seem to be running, obviously, there's more security issues on that, that I can't actually receive that even if it's running on that same frequency. We're going to look at that a little bit more, um, but I can't receive that with an Arduino. So yeah, we're going to look at that more. We're going to look at troubleshooting, uh, you know, monitoring uh, radio channels to see if you're actually getting a signal. So if something's not working, is it the signal's not going out and the, and the transmitter's broke, or is it something wrong on the receiver end? And we're also going to be looking at using a cheap little ESP and that transmitter. So we're talking, if you count the USB um, charger that I use to power it all, we're looking at like $6 worth of hardware to communicate to those cheap little zap outlets that control lights and other things in your household. So if you are interested in this, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss those videos. Check out the link in the description. Hopefully I'll remember to create a playlist and there'll be a link there for that. Be sure to check out my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. There's a link to that in the description as well, where you can search through all my videos from this channel and my main channel. This is my hardware channel. I have a channel that's mainly focused on software that I've been doing for years and I have many, many videos there. Also, if you enjoy my videos and you'd like to become a supporter, go over to my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash metalx1. 1000. There's a link to that in the description. And again, just a dollar or two a month really helps me out. And if you can't support me financially, you can support me by liking this video, sharing this video, commenting below, tell friends, and uh, you know, all that stuff. So thanks for watching, and as always, I hope that you have a great day.